Imagine a bustling airport in Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia. The date is November 23, 1996. A Boeing 767-260ER, registration ETAIZ, sits on the tarmac. This aircraft, powered by two Pratt & Whitney JT-97R4E engines, had taken its maiden flight on a sunny day in September 1987, over nine years ago. Delivered new to Ethiopian Airlines just a month after its first flight, it has been a reliable workhorse for the airline, with a short stint leased to Air Tanzania in the early 90s. In the cockpit, seasoned Captain Lula Bate is at the helm, with over 11,500 total flight hours under his belt, 4,067 of those in the Boeing 757-767s. Beside him is First Officer Jonas Makuria, who has flown more than 6,500 hours, 3,042 of them in the Boeing 757-767s. Loyal's seasoned hands have steered aircraft through calm and stormy skies alike, yet he has also seen the darker side of aviation. Twice before, he has looked into the eyes of hijackers, and twice he emerged unscathed. The first time, in April 1992, two hijackers armed with hand grenades had demanded a flight to Nairobi and onwards to Canada. The second time, in March 1995, five hijackers demanded a diversion to Libya, only to change their minds and ask for Sweden instead. Both times the hijackers surrendered after a standoff, leaving the aircraft undamaged and passengers unharmed. On this particular day, the flight had been delayed to wait for a connecting flight. As the sun started to rise, the aircraft, affectionately referred to as Zulu by Ethiopian Airlines pilots, after the last letter of its registration, finally began its journey taking off at 8.09 UTC from Addis Ababa. As the aircraft finally took off at 8.09 UTC, little did the crew and passengers know of the terror that awaited them. Twenty minutes into the flight, chaos erupted. In the confines of the cockpit, a sudden struggle broke out. Three Ethiopian men, armed with an axe and a fire extinguisher they had found on board, charged the cockpit. The peaceful hum of the aircraft's twin Pratt and Whitney engines was abruptly drowned out by the cacophony of shouts and threats. The intruders were ruthless. They made their intentions clear. They were hijacking the plane. Their demands were relayed in Amharic, French and English over the intercom, echoing through the cabin. They claimed to have a bomb and threatened to detonate it mid-flight if anyone dared to interfere. The supposed bomb was later revealed to be a mere bottle of liquor shrouded in a cover of deceit. First Officer Jonas Makuria bore the brunt of their assault. Forced out of the cockpit and into the cabin, his usual seat was overtaken by the hijackers. With the aircraft now under their control, they demanded the impossible to fly to Australia. Captain Loyal Abate, a seasoned pilot with over 11,500 flight hours under his belt, tried to reason with them. He explained that the plane had merely enough fuel for the journey from Addis Ababa to Nairobi. Australia was not within their reach, not even a quarter of it, but his words fell on deaf ears. The hijackers were adamant. An article in the airline's in-flight magazine had convinced them that the Boeing 767 could fly for 11 hours straight. They refused to believe anything else. Loyal was left with a chilling realization. He later confessed, they knew they wouldn't make it to Australia. They just wanted us to crash they should be dead. The way they were talking, they didn't want to live. With a supposed bomb threat and a course set for a destination they couldn't reach, the crew was left to handle a dire situation. In the cockpit, a battle of wits and courage was taking place. Captain Loyal, a seasoned pilot with over 11,500 flight hours, was engaged in a high-stakes negotiation with the hijackers. He tried to explain to them the reality of their demands. The plane simply did not have enough fuel to reach Australia. The journey from Addis Ababa to Nairobi had been calculated with just enough fuel for the trip, not a fraction more, but the hijackers refused to believe him. One of them, armed with an ax and a dangerous lack of aviation knowledge, pointed to an article within the airline's in-flight magazine. The article stated that the maximum flying time of a Boeing 767 was around 11 hours. This, they argued, should be more than enough to reach Australia. Yet, they failed to understand the crucial difference between the maximum flying time 
and the actual fuel on board. The plane could indeed stay airborne for 11 hours, but only if it were fully fueled, which it was not. Captain Loyal found himself in a chilling predicament, trying to reason with people who seemed hell-bent on a fatal course. In a moment of stark realization, Captain Loyal shared a haunting insight. They knew they wouldn't make it to Australia, they just wanted us to crash. They should be dead. The way they were talking, they didn't want to live. The chilling words echoed the grim reality of the situation. The hijackers weren't just threatening their own lives, but the lives of all the innocent passengers and crew on board. Despite the growing tension in the cockpit, Captain Loyal did not lose his composure. He knew he had to make a decision, one that could potentially save everyone on board. He had to think quickly, act decisively, and stay a few steps ahead of the hijackers. He had to outwit them, to lead them away from their fatal course without arousing their suspicion. In a desperate attempt to save everyone on board, Captain Loyal made a secret decision. With the hijackers demanding to see nothing but open ocean, Captain Loyal had to think fast. In the midst of this high-stakes scenario, the experienced Captain Loyal Abate had to formulate a plan that would save the lives of everyone on board. With the hijackers' eyes fixated on the horizon, he began to follow the African coastline, all the while maintaining the illusion of heading towards the open sea. But this was not just about steering the aircraft, it was a game of deception, a battle of wits. Captain Loyal had to keep his actions unnoticed, his intentions concealed. Every turn of the aircraft, every tilt of the wings had to be subtle yet precise. It was a delicate dance in the face of danger. However, the hijackers were not easily fooled. They noticed the outline of the land still visible from the windows of the aircraft, contradicting their demand for open ocean. With their suspicions aroused, they demanded Captain Loyal to steer eastward, away from the safety of the coastline. Undeterred, Captain Loyal complied with their demand. But with a secret plan in mind, he was not heading into the vast unknown of the ocean, but towards a speck of hope on the map, the Comoro Islands. This archipelago, nestled between the African continent and Madagascar, could provide a potential landing site. Captain Loyal had to navigate this treacherous journey with utmost care. Each passing minute depleted their fuel reserves, and every command from the hijackers increased the tension in the cockpit. Yet he remained steadfast, his focus unwavering. His plan was as daring as it was desperate. It was a race against time, fuel, and the ruthless hijackers, but Captain Loyal was not one to back down. He was determined to bring the aircraft and its passengers to a safe landing, no matter the odds. With a plan in mind, Captain Loyal was racing against time, fuel, and the ruthless hijackers to bring the aircraft to a safe landing. 